something that I think um, is very, very good. And I also like think that it's a good idea to make this more detailed video because, yeah, again, the, the performance of this team was just like so, so strong. Yeah. So all three of us, we made it through the uh, 256 people in the European regional qualifier. Yeah. Where you had to finish top 16. So uh, Fais and Pepsi both finished 8 and 1. I finished 7 and 2. So we were um, all in the top 16. And then even in the, in the um, regional finals, yeah, we, we still did pretty good, I would say. So with me finishing in top 8, Fais finishing in top 6, Pepsi in top 4. Um, and then even two weeks after that again, um, Pepsi doing so well again in the global finals. So the team was already like a month old at that point in time. Of course, mm -hmm. the, the meta game advances. But it didn't really like advance quickly enough to people show up with a solid plan because yeah, as you said, you went three and zero in the in the global finals there, and uh, you, you you didn't change anything. Yeah, so it's the the exact same team yeah, yeah. down to to every single set point. So I think that's just uh, very amazing. And um, yeah, what is up, YouTube? We are here with two of my very close friends. What's up, Marcus? What's up, Vice? Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up? I'm really glad to have both of you here. For the few guys who don't know about Marcus, Marcus, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah. So I'm Marcus. Um, I played yeah competitive VGC since 2010, so over 10 years now. And yeah, I had a few great tournament runs. I had a few bad tournament runs. Uh, most notably, I finished third place at the 2016 World Championships. And yeah, my recent or my, my, the, the best result I recently had was well with this team. Um, so yeah, I'm still playing on and off at the moment, but uh, it was a lot of fun to, to work on this team together with you. And yes, that's, but yeah, let's hear uh, what it's all about. Awesome, awesome. Faiz, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself as well for some who didn't see the initial video about uh, the best Asian team at the time? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Faiz. Uh, I've been playing VDC since... 2013. Yeah, I have played in a lot of tournaments. I think my most notable results so far would be, I think, day two at the European International Championships in mm. 2019. And of course, this Players Cup run with this amazing team. So if you guys are watching this video and you're wondering what we are talking about, um, three of us participate in the Players Cup, which is the most prestigious tournament we have right now due to COVID. Like the tournament itself has like a nearly a thousand qualified uh, players. So it's not just you enter the tournament because you want to enter it. You actually have to qualify it through the IC. You have to have a pretty good result and uh, you have to be in the top 252 in your region, like Europe, Latin America, North America and Australia. I don't think I'm forgetting something. And then you basically qualify for this tournament. And Marcus and Fais finished in top eight of Europe. Uh, sadly, only top four makes it to uh, the global finals. I was fortunate enough with the help of my great friends to actually make top four and finish as the third place in the global finals. And we're going to talk about this team. Fais actually finished top six. So uh, he Let's yeah, go. got one round further. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I would say pretty good showing of the three of us. I think we could start with the team building process. Yeah, so I think initially we started off at the end of Series 8 when my good friend Alistair uh, did well in the Players' Cup qualifying I see with a Blasters team, mm -hmm. which looked pretty similar to this one. Uh, it had a Zayton over Registeel, and I thought that Blasters was really cool because in the Players' Cup 3 qualifier I see I also used Blasters team and Back then, I I decided I would never use Blasters again. <laughs> this team looked really good, and I thought I would give it another shot and try to make it work in Season 9 as well. So I just took the core of Blastoise, Thunderous, Instant, and Rillaboom, and slapped on two other mons. I think they were Dragapult and... Night Lego. Lego. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just swapped onto the ladder with it, just to get a feel for the team, just to see if it works or not. And somehow I just didn't stop winning. <laughs> Actually got to place one on the ladder on the same day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I just got number one on the ladder. This seems flames. And yeah, that, that's how it started. Exactly. Marcus, what were you doing before Players Cup, before you hit us up and said, what yeah. are you guys playing? 
Yeah, you just said it. Uh, the Players' Cup is a very, very long tournament. Uh, if you also consider the, the qualifier and so on. So I think it's actually over like three months or something. So basically mm -hmm. the entire exactly. Series 9 format. So the, the qualifier was actually in Series 8. True, I think for this. true, true, right? true. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember using a, a Calyrex Shadow Rider team. I think Fice as well, right? Yeah, we used yeah, the, yeah. the same team. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I actually didn't play Series 8 at all. But uh, uh, when I heard when Series 9 was announced uh, with the restricted Pokemon coming back, I knew that I wanted to play that format. Mm -hmm. So, But then I realized, oh, if I want to play in the, the biggest, as you said, the biggest, most prestigious tournament that is happening in that format, I need to participate in the qualifier, which was Series 8, so I can even make it there. So, uh, yeah, without much knowledge about Series 8, I, I played in that qualifier and, yeah, barely qualified. What a go! But then I am, yeah, with the qualification, um, I knew that I now wanted to, like, be um, more serious again. So that was the, the last Players' Cup. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, that, that really sparked my competitive uh, drive again and so on. So, um, yeah. I um, yeah really wanted to participate in the next one, which uh, then was would be Series 10, or which was Series 8 before that I hadn't played at all. So um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I had a look at the Series 8 teams because I yeah didn't play the format at all because I was yeah. so focused on on yeah, Series 9. And when having a look at it at first, I realized well, Thunderous and uh, Landorus of of course sounds pretty good. And then um, after, I think it was the Japan Nationals when the, the team with Registeel came out. Um, I really thought that uh, Registeel could be an interesting team. Um, however, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't really feel so great for me and I was building on my own at the time. Uh, so it's the, the Grimmsnar and uh, Spectre variant. It also ended up doing pretty well in uh -huh. the, the Players' Cup for others. But so, so I was... Yeah, playing around with some of these mods and just testing on my own. And um, I didn't have so much time to prepare for uh, the tournament. But yeah, anytime I had, I tried to make Grimmsnar Spectre work. And then I think it was like, yeah, I think the day before uh, the, the team lock. When, yeah, because you guys, I knew that you were building something. And mm -hmm. uh, I heard that it was pretty spicy and good. <laughs> but... Yeah, and I think I, I knew like which six Pokemon it was. I heard about the Blastoise. And mm -hmm. so, I don't know. Yeah, like the, the day before Team Log, I was like, yeah, you know, like I, I couldn't finish my build. Like at some point, you maybe said I could maybe have a look at your team. Uh -huh. So, well, is this still a thing? And yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. I gotta thank you so much. Uh, so then I, I got the team and we yeah, did the uh, last minute prep session. So I locked mm -hmm. in the team and only after locking the team, uh, yeah, Fies and Fezzi, yeah, we went on a call and they explained everything about the team, started doing like a matchup sheet, um, adding to the, the column sheet that you guys already had. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was super cool. So I yeah, joined the, the fun rather late, uh, but nevertheless, it uh, was uh, yeah, an amazing team and just proves that even without having much experience with the team at all and without really being included or involved in the team building, I should say, um, I could still do quite well with this. It came off like you don't see yourself doing a lot for this team because you just said that I just uh, stopped by at the last day and asked you guys. But I'm, I'm going to be honest, like once you joined, we had a super good structure. We had the calc sheet. We had um, all the matchups. And normally like how Fiz and I approach tournaments, I would say like even uh, the X9 tournament where we played the Zacian team, we didn't have a calc sheet. We didn't have matchup plan something. I'm not, I'm not wrong, right, Fiz? No. I don't think we had the matchups planned before Marcus joined in. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I remember being on this hour long, hours long call when I was still traveling on the train <laughs> and we were discussing each matchup like yeah, the yeah. tiniest detail what yeah. it goes for this in turn two yeah. in Dude, that scenario and like, we, we had everything planned out. That helped me out so so much. Like I feel like the last day was actually the day where I was like a hundred percent sure that this team is the best team for Players Cup that we can bring. Like the team building process was kind of a roller coaster because we had so many different things. Like I was preaching Stack Attacker on this team on stream. Like I I had like three or four YouTube videos about the Stack Attacker version. I was spamming it on stream. I had one stream where we started at the rank of four thousand, and I made it to like top ten in one single stream. And I was like, hey. I would be stupid if I don't play this team even like ideally you don't want to play the teams you play on stream or feature on YouTube 
on an official tournament because obviously like if you do well and if you qualify for regional finals your opponent might just look up your team they see your hp stats they see how you lead they see how you pick they see how you play and that's uh something you want to avoid in the best case but since i saw that this team does so well i was like hey I'm just gonna bring it. Maybe we change something up. I was the biggest fan of Sakataka because it had like a trigger mode, which kind of helped the team. But Fais convinced, uh, convinced me to run a Registeel. I'm really, really happy that he did uh, manage to do so. Yeah, as you said, we were testing a lot of different things coming up, uh, leading up to Player's Cup. There was a phase of like one or two weeks where we had lost all faith to this team. I remember. <laughs> I think it was right around when uh, the Smogan Major happened, mm -hmm. and uh, Monkey, I think, went 10 0 with a Incineroar, Prancer, Thunderous team. So everyone was spamming it on the ladder, and then everyone just brought out their Thunderous hard counters, and we were <laughs> having a really tough time. And I was like, yo, bro, I don't think this team good anymore. Uh -huh. And then we started exploring different things. Um, like that that was when we started looking into Registeel things. Mm -hmm. Like Landorus Registeel was was our vision that we could like give us speed boosts, uh, max quake boosts on the Registeel and win the end game from there. And we tried a lot of different builds. Um, we had uh, some builds similar to what um, Kevin Salvato used, ended up using. Exactly. Stuff. We had a lot of different stuff, but nothing really clicked for us. And then I kind of got the idea, what if we just combine the best of both? Like we had a Landros on the uh, mm -hmm. Blastoise team and we had another Steel type. And what if we just change the Steel type to Registeel? And that's what we ended up doing. Marcus, do you remember what matchups we wanted to have something against? Because obviously, in, like if you go into a tournament like this, you definitely want to have like matchups against most of the uh, common teams. So uh, what did we want to cover? Yeah, so I think um, just generally, um, yeah, you said I brought in some structure. Yeah, so when going into a tournament, there are a few teams in every format that you can kind of expect to face. So for Series 9, you could definitely expect to, to face like a uh, Colossal team, for example. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could expect to face Torkoal Venusaur teams. Exactly. Yeah? And um, so especially against those, you want to have something. Then also some of the other strong Maximons, like Chogikus Dragapult is a, is a big combination mm -hmm. that comes to mind. Yeah, then also, of course, all the teams that might have some Japanese influence, like also this uh, Moltres, Regileki, Registeel version. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there were a, a few teams that I thought were pretty set in stone. Also, this uh, the, the team you mentioned earlier, um, which then kind of developed also a little bit more towards the Thunderous Landris, uh, Urshifu Dark version. So that was a thing, yeah. So there was just so many different teams um, where it felt like they were all pretty, or it was pretty clear which five or even six months they would be bringing, yeah. So sure, on the Colossal team, it might be the Moltres, it might be the Tobikis, but um, yeah, it was pretty important in my opinion to to prepare really well for those matchups because mm -hmm. you will end up uh, you will play against them and the worst yeah. thing that can happen in my opinion is to be in team preview against a, a team that is very common and that you, you you've seen before and then you don't know what to do yeah because you need to think about which plan to go for yeah because you can you can save that time and you can do that before the tournament because you just <laughs> know that you will play against it eventually yeah so and i think uh, we yeah tried to cover all of the things that i just mentioned with this team mm -hmm. somehow one team i was really afraid of was the clefairy ready like a double horse team true like even in our ev spreads we covered like every option so we had a foolproof game plan but mm -hmm. i think in the end none of us ended up playing against a single one of those teams i think i think early in the in the region qualifier uh, i played against like the the clefairy porygon z version of that team yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. i played against something that was a little bit similar to porygon z just changing thing up, things up there. But yeah, that's another that's another one of those really common teams that you uh, sort of expected going into the regional qualifiers for sure. Yeah, but I think just having a plan against those kind of teams, even if you don't play against them, is also really important. I think we can start talking about the months individually. Everyone was referring to it as a Blastoise team, so we have it as the first Pokemon. Uh, Fais, what do the EVs do? The EVs were to combat some of the most common mons in the metagame. So of course, Blastoise has a 
very good offensive typing with the water type, which hits a lot of common ones like Incineroar or Landorus mm -hmm. pretty hard, especially because we were expecting to face a lot of life orb Landorus. wanted to have our Blastoise always win the trade against it. So the EVs make it so that even if you're maxed, life orb Landorus is never going to two-hit KO you, even if it's not intimidated. On the other side, offensively, because this team struggles a bit against Urshifu, if you don't get rid of it quickly. G-Max Cannonade always KOs Urshifu after the Cannonade damage. The speed is enough to outspeed Paralyzed Dragapult, and I think that's most of it. Like, there's also like some combination cards, like where you live. Every combination attack Life of Thunderous and Choice Band Urshifu can throw at you. Um, you survive Moltres' max airstream with a life orb or at plus one without a life orb when you're not max, so you can yawn it. There's a lot of stuff, but yeah, I think those are the most important ones. Definitely. And like, if we see the moves, we have Protect, Yawn, Ice Beam, and Hydro Cannon. Like, if I. Talk about my experience. I feel like this was the most optimal four moves I could imagine. I had so many situations where I, I got a yawn off that and my opponent had to kind of respect my option to max, right? Like if they just don't max with their land risk, I just go for my max and pick them up. They probably lose the game from there because they wouldn't have a lot of tools to stop Registeel. So I was really, really happy to have this option of flexibility where I can either choose to go for the defensive approach and just get a yawn off and maybe try to reposition, solve their max. Or if I feel like it, I just max immediately and get one G max cannonade off with really good residual damage. I actually also um, was using Blastoise before for, for a little bit of time since there was a Japanese team which mm -hmm. also used the, the bulky Thunderous plus G-Max Blastoise combination. And I really did try to, to incorporate Fake Out in the Blastoise moveset because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like especially in best of one with closed team sheets, it's super cool because they would <laughs> always expect uh, the, the max turn one. But then if you just go for Fake Out, you can like really screw your opponent up. Um, but I'm also now definitely convinced that this moveset is way better than my <laughs> idea with Fakeout. And yeah, I think maybe the only thing that could be changed was maybe Ice Beam for Blizzard. But mm -hmm. since Blizzard actually sometimes doesn't max and you want consistent damage, I think, for example, against the Moogus or something or Rillaboom on the switch in, um, Ice Beam was definitely a very good choice. We were actually running Blizzard before, but uh, Faiz and I were realizing that we like if we don't max it blizzard is just a 50 like not even a 50 50 like if you miss it you uh, you lose if you hit it you win and we didn't want matches to end up like this so we just had an ice beam to have like a safe mon even if we're not going to max it we still can have it in the back and let's say ko landris even if it's like sitting in uh in sun or i don't know if sun actually changes the blizzard's accuracy but you can just ice beam it to safely ko it if it's not a salt vest also we didn't have any offensive cards which we really needed True. to visit for, yeah. other than Hydro Cannon. Maybe, maybe one more question uh, from, from my side here. So this, this team so it's, uh, has the Wake and Bury. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on the decision there, because I think most other Blasters teams before this were running uh, Life Orb, right? True, I completely forgot about the uh, the item. Yeah, Wake and Bury was uh, pretty clutch for me, especially against Regi Lackeys, because like, even if they were running Specs or Jaleki and you, you, like, even if you max it, they just go for a helping hand, go for a T-Bolt, or just somewhere running uh, stuff like Rising Vulture as well. Especially if they're, like, an electric train, it's, like, really, really bad, right? And with Wakanberry, you actually survive those, and you don't have to max it in front of Regilecki, because even if they go for Voltage, you're still going to take it, and you can still get your Yawn off, you can still get your Hydro Cannon off if you want to max something else, such as uh, the ladders in the back. And I feel like Wakanberry was... In my opinion, the best item that could have been there. Yeah, I agree. Because I think it was it allowed for a lot more flexibility if you were standing in front of a electric type like Reggie like you or mm -hmm. others. Normally if you don't have Rocket Barry, you are forced to either max or protect. And even if you're max like a Reggie like he still knocks you out. Definitely. Out Rock and, mm -hmm. and with the Rock and Barry, I think with the spread you even survive like a helping hand, life or boosted. Max Lightning from Regilecki, who's like one of the strongest attacks there is in the meta. <laughs> so that's like the main reason that Rock and Barry, mm -hmm. the best item in Blastoise. I think we can move on to Thunderous, which was another star of the team. I think Thunderous was the member that kept everything together on the team. Uh, I feel like I was leading it most of the time if I didn't know what to do. Like if you were facing matchups you didn't prepare initially, 
And Thunderous was like my way to pick Pokemon, especially in the lead. So we have really crazy fees, I think. Uh, a lot of special defensive elements, but Fice, what does this thing do? Yeah, so as I uh, said earlier, I was really, really afraid of the Clefairy Spectre teams because there's a lot of stuff they can go for in Tone 1, like Helping Hand, Next Move, Follow Me, Nasty Plot, or that's something completely different. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have a foolproof game plan against that, that I can lead Incineroar Thunder safely into it and just go for like fake out Eerie Impulse and just keep spamming Eerie Impulse so that Spectre does no damage. So this Thunder survives Modest Life or Next Phantasm from Spectre here. And also has like a 75% to survive life of hundreds of specs lightning. I think that's at the speed, outspeed something, but I don't remember what it was. Even outspeeding like opposing support thunders was really, really clutch because you could just taunt them before they go for a T-Wave or an Eerie Impulse because we were kind of speed creeping opposing support thunders as well, right? And I feel like I've not seen a support thunders that outsped my support thunders throughout the entire tournament. I was considering going Chima to outspeed Urshifu, like mm -hmm. Urshifu Water especially, but I think in the end the extra special defense ended up coming in clutch, so I don't regret that decision. Especially because we tweaked our EVs on our other ones to counter Urshifu better. Marcus, if you see the movesets, where, where, where are there times where you thought hey, if I had something else, it would have been way better, or were you completely fine with the four moves we we had here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny actually that this Thunder is now uh, is considered like a well, weird moveset because well, for as long as I've played VGC or for, for most years, well, in, in 2011 the standard Thunder was also just full offensive. <laughs> but ever since uh, Ray won Worlds that year with the bulky Thunder, mm -hmm. yeah, like that was just the standard set and everything um, that people were using. And also then in, in 2015, of course, uh, Thunders was so big and popular. Um, I really like the, the Eerie Impulse inclusion here, as I think, yeah, the other four, or, sorry, the other three moves, Thunderbolt, um, Thunderwave, and Taunt, are, like, so common on Thunderses throughout the years. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, with now Eerie Impulse is a super nice addition, because as Fyce just mentioned, against stuff like um, Spectria and so on, mm -hmm. it's just super great. Also, again, in, in Trick Room uh, with Prankster, you can just stop some attackers um, that would be really troublesome otherwise. So um, I know that there are some other cute options, like for example, um, Scary Face um, could be cool sometimes, mm. or uh, Substitute, which is what I think that uh, yeah, Japanese Blasters team I was referring to earlier yeah, yeah. was running. But uh, overall, I think this is the, the correct moveset um, for Thunderous on this team, but also on many other teams. If you want to run bulky, of course. That's exactly how I feel as well. This mod was actually our way to go pick to stuff like Sun as well, like especially against Venus or Torkoal. We really relied on Thunderous and Incineroar to kind of shut that down because with Incin and Thunderous, you just lead those guys. You fake out one mon. Most of the time, you fake out the Venu and you go for... Uh, actually, you can even fake out uh, the uh, Torkoal because it's less likely to max. So you fake out the Torkoal, you go for... A taunt if you're afraid to get sleep powdered but you can also immediately go for the t-wave so even if they go for a sleep powder or a max they are stuck with a paralyzed uh venus right and then you have your landers in the back and you can just clean from there so i feel like this was one of the most important pokemon of the team in my opinion also what i think is important to know is that the tournaments we played in or we prepared for here with this team were open team sheets yeah. so you would always know does the venus even have sleep powder do you need to taunt maybe and also the opponent you oh, okay they have taunt so they might use it here mm -hmm. um but yeah as, as you said if they went for the g max then you can just shut that down with every impulse and you're guaranteed to make it through the turn with thunderous if you pick out the partner so um, yeah, I guess something that's uh, a really good choice. Uh, let's move on to the next Pokemon. We have Fuego, which is Incineroar. Like, I will say that this was also a really important Pokemon, but actually every single Pokemon was so perfect. Like, if I could replay the tournament, I would not play... Uh, I would not change anything, like, Mon-wise. I would probably change something EV-wise, but we'll come to that later. But we here we have... Uh, another star of the team. And it's pretty unusual to see Incineroar like this, in my opinion, with a lot of defensive investment, but there is exactly one reason, Feist. Why are you playing Incineroar like this? Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, this team doesn't have, like, the most optimal Urshifu answers. Most of the time, 
it it's some kind of setup like the max from Blastoise or Landrus or Iron Defense on Registeel. So mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of switching options in front of an Urshifu. So that's why we had this Incineroar, which can take a close combat from Urshifu or Surging Strikes. Neutral, right? Like close combat. Yep. Or like minus one charge band. If it's mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what we were going for, really. And another thing was that Glastrier in Trick Room could be really scary for this team, because like we have three ice weaknesses. Like we have three resists as well, but we have three weaknesses. And the ones that resist the moves should be able to take the moves well enough, in my opinion. Because if it doesn't go for Hailstorm, it just goes for a Max Quake onto Incineroar or like a Max Knuckle. And if you don't take those moves well enough, you still lose too much HP for the resistance to come and clutch anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's why we also chose to go for such a physical defensive EV spread. The special defense could also be like boosted up by the Eerie Impulse from others. So that's why we didn't really see a need to invest a lot of EVs there. And as you guys can see, this is probably the fastest Incinera in the entire tournament. Like, I don't think anyone else has played an Incinera with 80, uh, 98 speed. Marcus, how was your impression when you were playing the tournament? Like, did the speed EVs come in clutch, or do you think we could have went with uh, a slower variant of Incinera? Yeah, so I think uh, something we'll also then uh, talk about a little bit later on, as we were just referring to maybe changing some EVs here and there. Mm -hmm. So um, the speed EVs are obviously super, super great against opposing landers if they are using um, what was during the regional qualifiers, I think, the most common set, uh, which is adamant max speed, which some HP EVs and then also uh, like the 116 attack. Um, and so, well, well, we'll come to our landers, but uh, spoiler alert, our landers is faster than that. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can airstream with landers, then Incineroar gets boosted and will actually outspeed them. So then Incineroar can parting shot, um, and all of a sudden, if they max their landers, then uh, they would be at minus one, but you can then also switch in Incineroar back again. So then they would be at minus two the next turn. And if you recall which move they went for, like you could maybe... I don't know, go into Registeel or, or Thunderous to, to take the Airstream that was directed in Cinema mm -hmm. and so on. So, um, yeah, just for that interaction, I think uh, the speed EVs were very, very helpful for the team because, yeah, to be honest, like Max Landorus is so, I, w I don't want to say broken, but it's so strong. It is. Yeah, and uh, like if you if you cannot stop it, then it'll just, just KO you and also boost its stats at the same time, like Definitely. all the Max ones, but... Yeah, Landorus with, with Stab, Max, Airstream is just especially powerful. And yeah, just for that interaction, I think the speed EVs were very important. And also, yeah, against a few other mons, like you could, as you said, you could be pretty sure that you would outspeed opposing Incineroars, and it's nice to just plan about this, like which fakeout is going to go first and so on, um, even before seeing the, the Intimidate activation. So yeah, I think the speed was really came really handy for me and definitely also won me a few games against Landorus. Yeah, I think initially we were struggling a bit with the last move slot because I, I was a big fan of Burning Jealousy. We were struggling a bit against Dragon Dance, uh, Dragon Pulp with Redirection and Burning Jealousy. My, my theory was that if they see it in the open team sheet, they won't go for Dragon Dance. But we ended up finding another workaround, which we will come to later as well. So we just said that, um, yeah, let's go for Taunt. Double Taunt is great. It's great against Definitely. Space 3 teams. It's great against Amulgus. It's just nice to not having to rely on Thunderous to get off a Taunt. Definitely. And like what I remember while testing was we had a really rough, uh, rough time against Dusk Ops, especially when they were carrying Haze. So what we tried to do was lead Thunderous because we want to shut out the uh, Trick Room and the potential Haze that's gonna Haze away our boosts from Registeel. So what we did was we just added Taunt to Instant to have another way of shutting that down because Thunderous sometimes just goes down to Max Hailstorm, right? And like if we have Rillaboom in the back because they have a Finny as well, we can't really switch that out. So we were forced to either sack the um, Thunderous there in turn one and then we couldn't stop Duskops from setting up Trick Room and then going for a Haze if we had like a couple Iron Defenses off. So Taunt was actually really, really clutch to have a lot of uh, safe place and just shut down like the plans of the opposing teams. Yeah, like this Incineroar set was the standard set for a reason. Okay, I think we can move on to another Gloomon 
which is the Rillaboom. I was really happy with this Rillaboom as well. It's probably the mod that did the least on this team. Like, if I had to decide which one did the least work, I would say Rillaboom, but... Rillaboom was still such a great mod. It was really clutch in a lot of matchups, especially against Finny teams, uh, against what else? Like changing terrain. Uh, we had a mode where we had to max the Rillaboom against opposing Porygon Z teams. I still remember that. Like I would say that Assault Vest is kind of standard because even Wolf, I think, won with uh, Assault Vest as well, the Players Cup 3. And I was really happy with this Rillaboom. We have not the craziest EVs here, I think, but it's still a lot of special defense investment, even though we're running the Assault Vest. And that definitely had its reasons. Yeah, I think Rillaboom was especially important because we didn't really have a lot against Carmine Feeney on mm -hmm. this team, other than Rillaboom. Maybe the Thunderers, if they haven't got off on Carmine yet. But because Rillaboom was our primary Epithini check counter. I wanted it to have as much special defense as possible. Also, Rillaboom is something you would pick into the <laughs> Spectre meta, for example. <laughs> it survives like a knife or helping hand boost of max phantasm, even if you're not maxed. And against Polygon Z, I think if you max yourself, you also survive. Some moves, I don't remember the exact calls, but... Mm -hmm. It definitely worked yeah, having... in the tournament <laughs> against Polygon Z. <laughs> So, like, the EVs were just for maximizing special bulk. Yeah, there's not a lot to say. Marx, do you have any final words to say about this uh, monkey? It's uh, funny to me that you say, although the EVs aren't that special, but uh, to me, when I first saw the team and I, when I first saw the EVs, I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's so clever on this team because um, I think for default, a lot of people are just running, like, max attack mm -hmm. because, as you were saying, yeah, sure, I mean, you have as well as anyway, so... You don't really need to invest too much into special defense. And well, that definitely is also a strong set. But I think for this team specifically, as you were saying, the max special defense definitely made a difference. Um, and I survived uh, a ton of moves on very low HP that I probably would not have uh, lived. And yeah, this was uh, really, really good. Yeah, initially, we had actually a uh, knockoff. I remember that over Woodhammer. Yes. But since we didn't have a boosting item on uh, for the Rillaboom to do more damage, also, like, we are adamant, but we don't have the most attack EVs. So we were like, hey, we need something to consistently KO stuff like Finny, stuff like Water Urshifu. Uh, even Regilekis can easily live aggressive glide in uh, aggressive terrain. So we had Woodhammer to make sure that if we need the KO, there is the option. And we just have to click the hammer and uh, just get rid of most of the Finnies, I want to say. I mean, Knockoff was kind of good against Dusk Ops and Porygon 2, but Porygon 2 was not the biggest problem because we had Dragy Seal, but for, I remember for Dusk Ops, Knockoff was kind of nice to just lead the Rillaboom and get a Knockoff off and then kind of try to win in the late game, but Woodhammer was just way more valuable. And we found our Dusk Ops matchup anyway, so we didn't need Knockoff. Okay, the star of the team, another one. Here we go. Look at this fast boy. Okay, like there's so many things that are weird, I would say. Like, if we look at the speed, if we look at Sand Tomb, even Registeel itself. I mean, Registeel was not super popular or popular at all in Series 7, even though that was the same format as Series 9, right? It kind of picked up in usage towards the end when Eric used a really crazy Registeel set with... I think he had Amnesia and Iron Defense and Flash Cannon, if I remember correctly. But he used that mod to max and then win the late games with Body Press. But at the beginning of Series 9, for whatever reason, everyone was spamming Registeel because of... I don't know if it was Japanese influence, but Registeel kind of was a s stable on most of the teams. I had the feeling. Like, it was it was all everywhere on the ladder at some point. Yeah, it's like it's like the 1-1 the one one where everyone think, oh, it's like no one knows about it, mm -hmm. but actually everyone knows about it. Yeah, but it's still very strong, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember when Players Cup 3 I see happened and we didn't know the format for Players Cup 3 regional qualifiers yet. I was messaging uh, my friend Raghav and was saying, you know, bro, I, I'm so sure that I'm going to use Registeel in the regional qualifiers <laughs> and no one's going to be expecting it. But then, of course, the uh, format ended up being Season 8, which was like a completely different format. Registeel was pretty much not existent there. So I dropped the idea, and then when we came back to Season 9, I remembered that when we were building this team, and I was like, yo, maybe we had something going on there, like maybe Registeel really is that good. And I remember we had Amnesia initially, but then I messaged Feist like one night, hey, do you know that Registeel learns Sand Tomb? 
And he was like, hi, didn't, but he didn't, like uh, myself included, we didn't think about the options of Santum. Obviously, if you see Santum, like at first what you think about is, hey, you don't lose to ghost type endgames anymore. But then we kind of started playing it and then we realized that, hey, we can't just trap opposing Pokemon. They can't switch. And this was so clutch for me, especially in my regional finals matches. Like I was trapping Kevin's Porygon next to Venus, so he couldn't bring in his Torkoal to outspeed my Landris. And like this was like I'm really, really happy that we had Santum, and it was so so clutch. I'm I'm just really glad, uh, grateful that we ended up having it on the team, even though it was like a really weird pick. Yeah, funnily enough, like the, the day you messaged me about Santum, like a few hours later. In my MPA chats, like I was on the puppies and on the cruisers, mm -hmm. uh, two Italian players, uh, Asuya and TTR, they were saying like, yo guys, Santu Registry is really good. Oh God. And I was saying to Pepsi, hey, we, we need to keep this on the low. Like nobody should know about it. This, this is like really good because Santu has crazy synergy with um, GMAX candidate damage. Mm -hmm. You can use it to trap moms. And we were like, okay, this is so good. We should keep it secret. And then a few hours later, they say, you know, Santa was crazy good. And I was like, all right, there goes our <laughs> secret idea. And like, Registeel is that mom that, like, even if we didn't bring Blastoise, Thunderous, Insin, or Rillaboom, or Landris, we knew that Registeel is definitely the mom that we we're gonna bring. We had like several chats where we were talking about Registeel, and we were like, hey, even if nothing works out, we're definitely gonna bring Registeel. And I remember saying that this Registeel loan can bring us to the regional finals on its own. And it was just that good. Marcus, what interactions did you have with your opponents? Uh, especially with the Incineroar's when they had taunt. Like, for me it was, yeah. they saw a taunt, uh, they saw a Registeel, they wanted to taunt it, but I just, iron defense before them. But the, the fun thing though against Incineroar, it doesn't really matter what they do, even if they go for like Flare Blitz, like you just iron defense up and they, well, you, you laugh at them, especially <laughs> if there's grassy terrain up and you recover from that and from leftovers. And yeah, Registeel is an Incineroar powder all of a sudden. So then the next turn you just outspeed and get the knockout. So yeah, it was really, really good. Auto being faster than the than the sad Landris that we mentioned earlier at mm -hmm. plus one. So you can iron defense before that. I had one set where uh, my registry that was at plus two outsped their Dragapult. Wow. So I could iron defense before the Dragapult uh, went for like its max moves. So that was really, really good. Yeah, and then also something um, that you already just mentioned about Sand Tomb. So I said earlier that I was also going to, to use Registeel for this tournament. But yeah, I was trying my own build or trying to find my own team with this. And I was using the Amnesia version almost entirely, like exclusively. I, I don't think I even tested Sand Tomb like a whole lot, mm -hmm. um, even though I knew it was a thing. And and my Registry was also a little bit slower. Like I still thought mine was really fast, but... Yeah, it was not <laughs> nearly really, near as fast as uh, what what we ended up using in the tournament. And I think I think Sandtomb, yeah, as you said, at first it just looks like oh, it's just a way to hit ghost types. Yeah, it does some passive damage. Ah, okay, they can't switch. Well, uh, sure, but most of the time you would think ah, if it's it's if Registeel's on the field, it's probably like an end game, so they cannot switch anyway. Mm -hmm. But Sandtomb is actually a move that I think is very very deep. And also during the tournament and during play, I think we, you also came up with, with more ways to like um, use it together with Yawn, mm -hmm. uh, which is another like really, really great synergy yeah. that just doesn't stick out at the very beginning. Uh, but the more you think about it, the more you realize oh, Centrum just offers like really, really good positioning options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amnesia is still a, a, a nice move that can sometimes just win games if you just like get away with all the boosts, but most of the time, if you have the time to set up Amnesia, then, uh, well, it, it looks like they don't have a good answer to Registry anyway, so by playing smart, you can probably also play around their special attackers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think in hindsight, um, I should have tested Sandtum earlier, because <laughs> then I also probably could have used it better, um, but still it was a, was a very, very good uh, choice for the, for the tournament. Do you have anything else to say about the Chunky Boy? Yeah, there was also, like, another interaction that we did a lot when testing, but it didn't really come up for me in the tournament, which was maxing Registeel, racking up those special defense boosts just to stall out their opposing max and get special defense mm -hmm. boosts. Afterwards, you could iron defense up and Registeel all of a sudden became... Am I the only one who maxed Registeel in the entire tournament? Uh, I, I did once as well. Let's go. Yeah, but it, yeah I, I didn't do it. I never did it you know. <laughs> also, another thing, like... People might be afraid that, oh, this registry has no bug though, it won't survive. 
Like our idea was that with iron defense, with a sky high space defense of 150, it doesn't matter in the end if you have like max defense or not because the defense is already that high. It won't change any significant roles. Mm-hmm. And regarding the special defense, we have the ripples. We can max quake with ladders, so we weren't afraid of that either. Uh, I think we can move on to last one, the Landris, which was probably one of our best mons as well, especially in the late game, where we kind of stalled everything with Yawn or uh, just T-Waves and switching around with Intimidates and uh, E-Ray pulsing our opponents. Then Landris came in and did an insane amount of work with the probably most crazy EV investment invested in defense. Yeah, this, this Landris was insane. Like, we were struggling with Urshifu, we were struggling with Dragapult. It just came to me at some point, like, what if we just put a lot of defense into Landris mm-hmm. so that we trade positively against the, those mods? Vitor was also really important against those mods because, like, it just nullifies the attack or defense drops from Dragapult. Intimidate becomes useless against it, so we can sort sense up freely. Yeah, that this EV spread was insane. <laughs> For sure. And I remember in the tournament taking a Max Hailstorm from a Metagross with this Landris, completely neutral. And that was, that was just like a game changer. If you know you can survive this, you can you can do so many crazy plays and you have so many options. And for me, it was probably the... I mean, we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but I was really, really happy with it in uh, the qualifier and the regional finals for sure. But other than that, Marcus, do you have anything uh, else to say about the uh, Landris here? Yeah, just maybe, just maybe overall something I think that is very, very cool and that this team showcases. Because of course now we're moving on to to other format, other rule sets. But something that I think can be taken from this team um, and the way that it's built. So in the recent years, uh, Pokemon, especially while well, during these online tournaments, the most of the big tournaments are now played in, with open team sheets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know the moves of all Pokemon, but you don't know the stats. Yeah, so. Um, I think it's very, very good to to play with um, the assumptions of your opponents here, because whenever someone sees, uh, for example, Landris deep review with this specific move set, or at least that's what I would also do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would go to my damage card and I would put in, okay, this is probably adamant, it's probably max speed, probably 116 attack, probably um, whatever uh, is left in in HP. Yeah. Um, the the 84 or whatever, yeah. So you 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 know maybe it has a little bit more um, HP, maybe a little bit less. You know you never know, but roughly you know what to expect. Yeah, mm-hmm. same for Registeer. You know that okay, it's probably really bulky. For the Rillaboom, you think oh probably max attack. Oh well, then there's only max HP left. Maybe I'll clock against that. Uh, against the Incineroar, you probably expect your close combat from Rushi to get the KO or whatever. Yeah. And so with um, these custom EV splits and with uh, really playing with the assumptions of your opponents, you get the advantage that in the first game, they don't know the splits. You know that you will probably take their attack mm-hmm. and you know that they don't know. Yeah, that's so, a game um, changer. So you can really make plays where the opponent might be like, mm-hmm. um, okay, so he has Landris in well, but but I have, I don't know, I have Dragapult, so... He can, he can never just like max here because I could just double up on it or whatever. So maybe they even go for a different move because they think, oh, it's uh, like they have a threat on the board. But you know, because of your EV spread, it's actually not a threat because you can take the double up, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that really, really um, helps a lot. Helps a lot in also best of threes. And you, because even if they find out, like, this is not like a, a, a joke. EV split, or it's not something that is that tries to surprise. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's a very very strong split, also for the other months. Uh, so the goal is not to surprise, but uh, it's a very very nice side effect, and that I think is something that everyone can can yeah learn about and also take away from from this team, if nothing else. Beautifully said. As, as Marcus just mentioned, this Landris uh, survives a double up from Life of Dragon Plus Max Phantasm, then you nullify the defense drop. And mm-hmm. then you survive Urshifu Sergeant Strikes. Like, those are insane. Those are like completely insane. The, no one would ever expect the Landris to survive uh, this. For then, sure. Then, then you just max Airstream. I don't know, get a new register next to it. Mm-hmm. Set up an iron defense, and off you go. Like, I don't know, th- there's not much to say other than this spread was like, one of the 
best EV spreads I've ever had on mm-hmm. a one. We said earlier that life of landers was going to be like the most common landers we're, mm-hmm. we're going to face. And that doesn't even do it KO the standards, even at neutral. We have all six months, but I would quickly scratch on uh, a bit of a tough matchups or tough months. As I mentioned, I really love this team in the qualifier in the regional finals. I even loved it in the global finals. I mean, I won the first three rounds, 3-0 starts. You, you can't start better from that. But what really broke my neck, I think what the reason was why... I didn't win the tournament uh, in the end, even though, or aside from the fact that my opponent played really, really well as well, is that my opponents made their homeworks, uh, homeworks and they played max speed Jolly Landris. So we had, most of the time, uh, I had the fastest Landris in uh, the regional finals and the qualifier and everything. Like, our Landris was outspeeding the opposing Landris most of the time. And like, if you look at this Reggie Steel, it's really fast, right? And if we get an airstream off, we actually outspeed the opposing adamant uh, landers as well and get an iron defense off be- before they can do anything. We can get a parting shot off with our um, instant to kind of uh, negate at least one boost and then switch into our thunderous to take to not die to or to not get affected by max quake, anyways. But my opponents both were running uh, max speed landers with the jolly nature, and that was just really bad. Even I. Even if I got an airstream boost, uh, my range steel was still slower than their uh, landris. They had a life orb. They were playing sword stance, and like this team has doesn't have the best landris matchup. If you can't bring uh, the blast toys, because especially on those two teams, like they had screens, they had a, a spectre where they can just snarl you. You don't do da- uh, a lot of damage. They have an Amoongus, and like Max Hailstorm doesn't hit Amoongus that hard. They had Regi Lucky, so it was a really weird matchup. And like Marcus played. Leonardo before in uh, regional finals and he only lost because uh, I don't want to say he only lost because he timed out but he could have forced a game three at least right and we knew that our Landris was faster than Leonardo's uh, Landris at that tournament but he made a really good call by uh, playing a max speed Landris and that was in the end what made him finish second yeah thanks thanks for for reminding me i had almost forgotten about that <laughs> sorry bro but yeah other than that like annoying matchups were like max speed landris um for me personally i don't think we had the best moltres matchup if i'm gonna be honest um i knew that if i lose to something it's like i didn't even plan on uh losing to max speed landris because i didn't think that people would run it because like adam was so common right and we were playing like 100 matches, maybe even 200, 300 matches with this team on Shoutout, and we always had the fastest Landris, so it was really weird to see a Landris outspeed me. But other than that, like, I knew that a good Moltres player with, like, an Amoongus to redirect, a lot of Intimidates, a lot of fake outs, maybe screen support, uh, could really be uh, problematic for our team. And if you just play against players who are the best in their region, and they have those uh, tools in their hand against you, uh, it's really tough to, to come back from that. Yeah, like I, I remember seeing a message I sent to you, like this team doesn't have the best Moltres matchup or the best Vinucol matchup because Vinucol is unfair. Mm-hmm. It, it can always find a way to win. And funnily, funnily enough, like Moltres was the, what you lost to in the uh, global finals. Vinucol was what I lost to in mm-hmm. regional qualifiers. So that was funny that I was like saying to you, yeah. I'm kind of worried about those matchups, but it's still doable. Like, in the hands of a good player, mm-hmm. everything gets a bit shaky. Yeah, maybe maybe that's also something that you can learn from, from this team and um, from this tournament run, that even if you're, like, if you're aware that there are some matchups where you're not super confident in, um, well, we, we put in um, practice and we, we, we beat uh, a few Moltres teams um, in the regional qualifier, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, as Fancy said, then only at the very like last stage where it's like the, the very best players in the world, yeah. And then if they're using the team and uh, they're having a, a good day, they're throwing up, playing well on the day, and um, they also have a like a, a team matchup. Then then it's when it really gets tough. But yeah, sometimes uh, maybe it's it's good not to get discouraged. Um, if you identify a, a bad matchup that you cannot fix, because maybe you can come up with a with a workaround way to steal a best of three if you can outplay them, and then uh, like focus more on outplaying them than focusing on the oh I cannot deal with this, uh, this is too good, mm-hmm. I, I won't be able to win because well yeah if you think like this then you 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 definitely will lose. 
yeah, sometimes it's possible to 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 make some good plays and um, to, to come up with ways to deal with even like bad matchups. Do you guys have any final words? We've been uh, recording this for an hour already, so I don't want to take away you guys' time. Uh, you guys are both working and this is your weekend. Um, any final words about anything you want to say? Yeah, let me let me just uh, go in there quickly because I don't want to have the last words because again, I didn't really contribute too much to this team. No. Um, so maybe something that I think um, is very, very good and I also like think that it's a good idea to make this more detailed video because yeah, again, the, the performance of this team was just like so, so strong. Yeah, so all three of us, we made it through the uh, 256 people in the European regional qualifier, yeah, where you had to finish top 16. So uh, Fais and Fezzi both finished 8 and 1, I finished 7 and 2, so we were um, all in the top 16. And then even in the, in the um, regional finals, yeah, we, we still did pretty good, I would say. So with me finishing in top 8, Fais finishing in top 6, Fezzi in top 4, um, and then even two weeks after that again, um, Fezzi doing so well again in the global finals. So. The team was already like a month old at that point in time. Of course, mm -hmm. the, the meta game advances, but it didn't really like advance quickly enough to people show up with a solid plan. Because yeah, as you said, you went three and zero in the in the global finals there, and uh, you, you you didn't change anything. Yeah, so it's the the exact same team yeah, yeah. down to to every single set point. So I think that's just uh, very amazing. And um, yeah, just want to say thank you again to be part of uh, this crew. The, Best Blasters team ever. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, uh, I want to add up on what Marcus said. Like, this team has proven to be like really consistent, really a good team. And I think if it was on another day, both Marcus and I could have made global finals as well. So it was a bit unlucky that Marcus and me got paired up in losers, uh, in losers bracket. So we had to knock each other out. Yeah, I think on another day, Easily, we all of us could make global finds, and I think that just speaks for the team. Thank you guys very much. I already said it, but I'm just gonna repeat myself. Like I could, have, I wouldn't be able to make it without you guys. Uh, I really mean it. Thank you guys so so much. Like down to every single night we planned on the matchups we were discussing different scenarios about leads like all this cog sheet helped me out so much like even for regional finals we were preparing super well like initially we thought that we don't have a good matchup against marcus team but marcus kind of managed to 2-0 him which was in my opinion the most impressive thing because like we were just playing against each other and like we had no chance right and I, we were like hey how do you want to beat this team against someone who's even better with this team than we are but marcus just went there and just to out him and it was just i'm really sad that they didn't broadcast that match but uh i'm definitely gonna watch it if i haven't already yeah, maybe maybe i should maybe i should upload it somewhere you know, at some point definitely. but yeah that's maybe something we didn't really talk about but yeah um also i think um i want to say thanks again because i was really able to focus or i, I prepared so much for this tournament like from the point where I got the team until then the uh, regional finals, like those, it was like roughly two weeks. But I prepared so much as I probably never did for for Worlds, maybe Oof. except for 2016. Because oh, well. uh -huh. um, yeah, we were playing like almost every day, and then uh, like playing all the different matchups, coming up with plans, playing against each other. That was a super fun time. Um, 100%. And, yeah, I will, I will always remember that and uh, cherish those times. So yeah, that was that was great. And even greater that it paid off. So once again, congrats to to both of you, uh, and especially to Fedi, of course, for uh, the amazing finish. Okay, congrats to you as well. Yeah, I have to say that the prep really, really, really ended up paying off. Like we have so many replays against each archetype that we thought would be popular. We had like a twenty-one page word document where we had matchups <laughs> planned, we had calls and everything. And I don't know. We were like really dedicated to do well in this tournament and the prep, yeah, it just paid off. I'm gonna wrap this video up. Guys, if you have Twitter and you don't follow Fice or Marcus, definitely make sure to do so. I just can't thank you guys. I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, thanks for being here with me. I had a great time. Uh, if you guys like the video and the content, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.